Hi, today I'm going to be showing you how to create professional data visualization within Excel using graphs and charts and how to make them dynamic. Let's say for example you have a monthly task of preparing charts and graphs for a management report and it's a hassle to always have to change the range to reflect the latest data. We can better efficiently tackle this by creating a graph that will change and update the data based on a specific period toggle to reflect the latest information. To go over this, we're going to go over an example where we want to create a graph showing the latest interest revenue and the interest margin for the last six month period. Now there's a lot of data here starting from January 2019 all the way to December 2024. And to make this dynamic, we're not actually going to be referencing this source data set, but instead we're gonna create a new data set that will change based on a period toggle within the chart feed tab. The very first step that we're going to do is first create a data validation for a drop-down list to reflect the current period. So I'm going to reflect that over here. And essentially I want this to be a drop-down to reflect a certain date. And in order to do that, the very first thing that I'm going to be doing is the filter function, where I'm going to be filtering row five, where row five is not empty. And this is essentially going to return all the latest dates within the source data tab. And what this will do is every time I add a new date, it will then be reflected within my dropdown list. Right now the data set is horizontal and I want to make this vertical. So I'm going to first layer on a unique just to make sure that we don't have duplicates and then also layer on a transpose function at the end. And now you'll see that the data is arranged in one column. So let's actually convert the formatting here so that it's more easily understood to month and year. And now you'll notice that this data set goes from January 19 to December 2024. And if I were to add January 31st, 2025, it will then be included within this list. And for my data validation, what I'm going to be doing is I want to allow a list where it will return this specific array. Now I can select any month within my index. And again, if I add January 31st, 2025, it will then be included within this list. And you'll notice that within the data validation, it will also be included within that list. So this is a very efficient way to create a dynamic dropdown list. And then for the chart feed, this is the data set that I want to actually use to create my chart. And as I've mentioned, I want to create a chart reflecting the current period and the last five months for a total of the latest six month data. So what I'm going to be doing is, let's say today is December 2024, simply returning this month. And what I'm going to be doing here is use the end of month function to use negative one so that it reflects the prior month relative to the current date. And what you'll notice is it reflects December, then November, October, September, August, and July. And if I update the current period to May, you'll notice that the dates change as well. So now I want to bring in the data that I actually want to analyze, which is interest revenue and the net interest margin. So I'm going to bring in interest revenue and NIM percentage. And the way that I'm going to be bringing this information in is I'm going to be using the index function, referencing this entire section. I'm going to match the metric that I want to analyze. And lastly, I want to match the period that I want to analyze as well. So I, if I update the vertical criteria to my metric name and then my period, Now I have a unique data set and you'll notice that when I update my period, it will also update the data set to reflect the last six months and the corresponding data as well. And just for another example, let's go to April 2024 and then it will return the last six month period with our data. And because I've structured this function to reference the entire row, every time we add a new data set, 
we would be able to simply just update the current period to reflect the changes accordingly. And lastly, we just have to make the chart. So we're going to go to the insert tab here, and then we're gonna insert a bar chart first. And click select data and determine your sample data. To show how to do this manually, you want to add your Y values and your X values. Your Y values should reflect the data that you want to reflect within the graph. The series name, I want to call this interest revenue. And then the series value is, I want to include this data set right here. And then I'm also going to add another one where the series name is going to be NIM percentage, which is net interest margin. And then the series value that I want to add is this NIM percentage right here. And lastly, my X axis, I want to reflect the actual period, which is the month. So I'm going to edit this and my X axis, I want to reflect my months. And then when I press okay, you'll notice that I have my data set here. And then again, if I update my date, it will then update the data set in the bottom accordingly. However, you'll notice that the NIM percentage is significantly smaller than the interest revenue. So we have to change this presentation a bit. And the way you want to tackle this is you want to go to change chart type, where then you're able to select the combo and then choose a secondary axis for the NIM percentage. And you'll notice that it creates a relative range for the net interest margin based on the values that it has. So here I'm gonna press okay. And now you'll notice that the NIM percentage and the interest revenue is now presented separately. And overall, the approach that we took to creating a dynamic data visualization was to first create a data set that is dynamic in nature. And once we update the data set, because the graph is referencing this specific portion, it will also update in accordingly to the period that we've selected. I hope this video helped you gain insight in how to efficiently make a dynamic graph. And if you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. I'm going to be uploading more educational content. So as always, follow for more.